Hello, everyone, and welcome to Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. It's home of the Coach Kelly Wells Show, as we'll talk to you, Pike basketball tonight with the all-time winningest coach in Pikeville history. Coach Kelly Wells joins us momentarily. Also tonight, we'll talk to UPike women's basketball. Head coach Cliff Williams in the house tonight as we'll catch you up to date on the UPike women's program, currently in the top 25 in the country. Joined now by the coach of your University of Pikeville Bears. And, Coach, uh, the win over Bob Jones University gives you 243 wins at Pikeville. And with that, you're now the all-time winningest coach in Pikeville basketball history both men and women. Your thoughts? Well, I, I think the milestone is, is so significant because I get to share that with every person that's ever played, coached, been an administrator during this period uh, with them. And, and that's what makes this award great. Individual awards are what they are, and, sure. and we push those kind of as, as things we'll look back in years. But th this is something that's very good to, to call our former players and I hit them up on social media and just kind of share with them. When someone congratulates me, gives me an awesome opportunity just to congratulate them for being a part of the success. And certainly this wasn't a one-man show by any means. And we've had a lot of great coaches and a lot of great players. And, you know, I told Ty the other night it's really neat uh, to get a, a milestone of this nature of winning and never have scored a basket, made a pass, or gotten a rebound. So this sure. is great to share this with all the folks around us. You've been honored as a player. Uh, at, uh, of course, Rowan County and at, at Moorhead as a player. You've gotten individual awards. How is it different to receive war awards as a coach as opposed to those player awards that, you know, you did score the points, you did get the rebounds, and you were able to cut down the nets as a player? Well, one of the things for me coaching has always been about is trying to take players from where they are to where they want to be and where they need to be. And this gives us some recognition that we're doing some of those good things. And uh, this is a team sport. It's not golf. It's not bowling. It's it's a team sport. So it's not individualized in any fashion. So the fact that you get a good get a good team award here, and you know, not just the the way we've won here, but the winning percentage we've had in the time that we've been here has been remarkable. And that's a testament to all the guys who have been before us. And one of our biggest things is tradition never graduates. And all of those kids, you know, from our championship teams to our very first team, have called and congratulated. And I've been able to share with them, well, you know, this is only possible because of guys like yourself. And you get a part of this award as well. And you've got those players scattered throughout not just the state, the area, the country and the world. You've got players playing internationally, playing professional basketball, and I know we see some of your players not just on your coaching staff, but now head coaches at the high school level. And I know that makes you feel like a proud papa. Really it is. And, you know, it's all about giving back. And we want to do as good as we can. But it's my job to make sure that those guys have opportunities too. You know, I've got Richie Riley, the head coach at Nichols State. We've got Matt Hurt, the uh, assistant coach at Coastal Carolina. We've got, you know, several high school coaches all around. And, you know, college coaches as well. I don't want to get into naming one. But we I think last count we had, had 15 or 16 coaches that have been on staff that have moved on to either a high school head coaching job or a college job. Sure. Sure. Uh, and those those are neat awards, you know, with the Brett Rectors of the world that are that are doing great associate head coach at Charleston and my current staff who I think are all head coaches in waiting. You know, those are those are neat, neat things. Absolutely. Coach Kelly Wells now the winning as coach in Pikeville basketball history. We'll talk some U Pike basketball tonight. You'll meet the women's coach at U Pike. Cliff Williams is with us tonight as we come to you live from Buffalo Wild Wings. No players tonight. They're on Christmas break. After you wrapped up the win December 16th over Bob Jones University, a 77-53 win, and, of course, your team improved to 12-3. and One of the leaders in that game, Jordan Perry. Talk about his performance. Well, he got another start, and as a freshman, he's had some up-and-down games, but yeah. certainly we expected that. But we want him to continue to play and continue to get better, and there was no doubt that he certainly – took advantage of that starting opportunity, and, and he's earned it through practice time. You know, the guys that started for us the other night were the guys that had earned it after two weeks of practice, uh, just putting in the right amount of time, doing the right things. and not all, uh, It shows up his scoring, but he also guarded the best player uh, on the opposite team. The Riddle Kid really put one on us the first time we played them, and he shut that down. He totally got that started. The energy that those guys play with in that starting group were, were amazing, and he's a big part of that, even as a freshman. And I don't expect him to be the leader, but his leadership by example was tremendous in his play. Another guy that we talked about on the last show, and we're going to take a little credit with the coaches' show effect, Mike Lewis had a double-double, 13-10. and 10. He really didn't. He had a hard week last week. He lost a, a close member of his family, so he really struggled through the week. It was finals week and all that pressure that comes with that. It was good to see him have a nice game going out to go home. And, 
you know, all of those guys truly now have some time off. They actually went home. They'll come back Christmas Eve, and we'll get right back to work because we head to Miami on the 26th, and they'll spend Christmas with us, and we'll, we'll try to keep that as homey, as family as we can. Sure. Uh, but certainly they get some time to go home and relax and, and visit with their folks and catch up with everybody for a few days. And probably eat too much and condition too little. Uh, any concerns about yeah. conditioning yeah. after that much? There, there, there's always those concerns. Sure. And certainly we, we expect when they come back we'll have to do some conditioning. I'll lose my voice probably yelling yeah. at them. I say, I told you guys so, I told you so. And yeah. That's happened now for 19 years I've been coaching. Probably every single time we give them that opportunity. And I was probably guilty as charged as student right. athlete as well. But we'll work through that. And it's more important for me to give them time to go home uh, and get that family boost and uh, maybe get that little extra charge going down the stretch here we need. Got to love the fact that Pike, in spite of three losses the first half, ranked 14th in the country at the Christmas break. Some things to build on for the second half, but I know you're looking forward to that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. You're tuned to the Coach Kelly Wells Show. We're talking Pike basketball tonight, our Christmas edition, live from Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll meet the head coach of the Pike women coming up next. Coach Wells returns. It is the Coach Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back to Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. It's the home of the Coach Kelly Wells Show as we talk U-Pike basketball every Wednesday night, catching you up to date on the U-Pike men's basketball team. And tonight, a chance to meet the, the University of Pikeville women's head coach. Cliff Williams joins us now. And Coach, welcome to the, the Coach's Show. Thank you. Great Thanks for to have me. you here. You're a new addition to the Pikeville community. Yes, I am. Let's yes, talk am. about that. Let's talk about your background. Let's introduce Cliff Williams to the community. Well, uh, the last two seasons prior to coming here, I was at Florida State University in Tallahassee and uh, served as a video coordinator for Sioux Samurai. Uh, we had an elite, an elite eight run and a sweet 16 run. Um, great program, great kids. Sure. It's good to work in. Not just at Florida State, but also you spent time at UK, also working with video and scouting. 2011 to 2014, worked for Coach Cal on the men's side. Um, what a run that was because yeah. got to go to a national championship, win a national championship. Um, then we get Robert Morris year, and we flip it around and go back to the Final Four in 2014. It's a good run. Absolutely. What's it like working for Coach Cal? That's um, it's an elite program that does it a little bit different. You know, he, the way he describes it is pretty accurate. Um, no other program runs the way that one does, just because the level of talent that you get in there, um, the level of preparation that's demanded of you. Sure. Um, and, and you know, it prepared me for for where I am today. Truly the highest expectations of any program you've been, been involved in? Without a doubt. No yeah. question. No question. You've spent time uh, on the AAU circuit as well with AAU players coming up through the years. High school as well. You've been involved. Certainly. Uh, you're now a head coach of a small college program. Mm -hmm. How's that different than anything you've ever done? You know, everything I've done up to this point has prepared me for this opportunity that I have now. Um, you know, from the video, from high school, from the AAU, um, each each step along the way has prepared me for right now. Um, and I'm fortunate to work with a really good group of girls, um, young women, who who are dedicated and committed to being the best that they can be. Being the best they can be, uh, currently ranked 24th in the country, and uh, you're midway through the first half, 11 and 4. Your team shooting it very well in the first half. We're number four in the nation in, in scoring in NAIA Division One right now. Um, I believe we're tied with um, Lindsey Wilson. I can't remember who sure. that is, but we're tied for fourth. Um, so my focus is on the defensive side of the ball with this right. group right now. Um, we're just trying to get better every day defensively. Um, we run multiple defenses, and it's just about having everybody on the same page, you know, day in and day out and trying to be consistent. How tough is that? to be consistent, to be better every day. When you have this job thrust on you at a, such a late date, implementing your system uh, in the course of just a, a couple of months, how far is this team along? How close are they to where you want them to be? Um, we've made great strides considering that I started implementing a new system on September the 19th. Sure. And it is, what, December 21st today, yeah. I believe. And uh, – you know, we are 11-4, and 2-1 and one in the Mid-South. Um, we are growing. Um, obviously, the offense, because of the level of talent that we have, is so much better right now. Um, but defensively, we are making strides. Um, 
they work extremely hard in practice to sure. get better every day defensively. 11 and 4, those four losses, I think, combined 13 points. You've been in every game you've played. We've been in every one. Um, I, I really like how these girls compete. Uh, you know, a tough loss over the weekend at the buzzer. I mean, I watched the ball hang in the air yeah. literally as the, as the buzzer went off. Um, you know, that was a tough one. We lost in double overtime at Grace. Uh, very competitive bunch. Sure, absolutely. And uh, this team has been successful. The last couple of seasons, we've seen the growth of the program. Does that make your job a little easier to step into? In, in some ways, yes. And in, in some ways, not so much because, you know, these girls have to learn how to play with a target now. Yeah. Um, it, it's a little bit different when you're everybody's big game. You know, Cal talks about that. You know, you know Kentucky is everybody's Super Bowl. Um, it's similar to that for these young women this year. Very good. Coach Cliff Williams, head coach of the University of Pineville women's basketball team, our guest on the Kelly Wells Show tonight. We'll get a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk about some of the players with the U-Pike women. That's coming up. We're live from Buffalo Wild Wings. It's presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back to Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. Andrew Joyce joined by Cliff Williams, head coach of the U-Pike women's basketball team. Off to a great first half start, 11-4, and four, ranked 24th in the nation, and uh, currently on Christmas break. Coach, uh, your young ladies, uh, they've gone home for the holidays. They get a little bit of a break. You don't come back until January 2nd. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about their schedule. How long do they have off before you bring them back to the gym? They'll return to campus on the evening of the 20th. We'll start practicing on the morning of the 29th and get ready for that January 2nd game. Very good. And that, that's Bluefield State mm -hmm. at the Expo Center. We'll talk more about that. But we want to talk about the first half. But I've got to ask you the question I asked Coach Wells. Concerns about players conditioning after an extended break. They go home. They eat well, as we all do over the holidays, and probably don't get as much conditioning as they should. True. And, you know, we, we've sent them home with, with a regimen to follow, sure. knowing that they probably won't follow it 100% to the letter, but if they do something, right. um, we don't want to come back and, and feel like we're starting over. And that's, that's the key. Um, we'll probably practice twice a day um, because it's all basketball until January 17th sure. um, for this first week or so, and we'll see how it goes. Let's talk about the first half. You've had some players that have had excellent first halves. Uh, talk about that. Devin Conley, as of late, has just shot lights out. Probably the last six games, Devin Conley has been just phenomenal. Um, you know, setting records on, on the court and, and in the Mid-South Conference, uh, two-time Mid-South Conference, back-to-back -back winners yeah. of the Player of the Week. Uh, no one's ever done that before at U-Pike. Uh, she made 12 threes in a game, went 12 for 20 from the three-point line, had yeah. 40 points, just phenomenal. Absolutely. Uh, she's been a big part of the success in the first half, but she's had a lot of help as well. Let's talk about the roster. They, Kella Elridge, um, Candace Porter, our two senior captains, um, have just been steady. Um, Kella herself <laughs> surpassed 1,000 points this year. Right. Candace did as well. Um, we've got freshmen that are playing well this year too. All three post players um, on my roster, Mia Gratrix from Tennessee, Crystal Keaton from Raceland, and um, Elizabeth Latham from uh, Somerset, they're all contributing um, – quality minutes to us on the floor um i can't say enough we're 10 11 12 deep right now sure yeah does that is is that an advantage is that a disadvantage as you get further into the season heading toward tournament time it's a challenge because you know the, everybody wants to play sure um you know and and so limits are there are minutes they're limited um, but, you know, it gives us an advantage against the conference because many of our conference teams are only maybe six, seven, eight deep. Right. Um, so we like to play fast. We like to get up and down the floor. And, and so it's certainly to our advantage to, to have a deeper roster. You stole my next question. Mm -hmm. you, you, I was going to ask because your scores are everywhere. You, you've busted triple digits. Mm -hmm. You've had games in the 50s. Yes. Uh, I was going to say, what style would you prefer? Do you want to score a bunch? Do you want to have a lot of possessions? Do you want to get up and down the floor or more of a slowdown type? Our strength is our ability to, to shoot the basketball from the perimeter. Um, so I prefer to play an up-tempo game where we, we increase the number of possessions that we have. Um, you know, there are teams who like to, to slow it down because they're defensive-minded. Bethel, for instance, sure. number 18 team in the country this past weekend, uh, they wanted to slow it down. And, you know, we had a complete contrast in styles and, 
and um, we didn't shoot it as well as we'd like, but we control the tempo of that game. Absolutely. Uh, of course, uh, we look at the first half record, 11-4, and 4, 24th in the country. Your thoughts on the first half. How do you grade this team's first half performance? To give it a grade, um, considering all of the changes that, that we've gone through, I'd have to give them a B-plus on where we are right now. Um, we've competed. We've been in every game, as, you, as you've alluded to, and, and uh, I just like where we are and, and the opportunity we have going forward. You've had a little bit of a look at the Mid-South Conference, obviously, with your experience uh, with video. You've taken a look at a lot of Mid-South oh, yeah. Conference teams already in preparation for the second half. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on this Mid-South Conference, because it is loaded. It is. Um, you know, and it really reminds me of the ACC on the women's side because every night out is going to be a battle. Sure. Um, it's a defensive-minded conference. It's very physical. Uh, and so that's that's been where we've focused our attention in practice and, and in trying to improve. Um, I looked at all the numbers in, in NAIA uh, defensively in scoring, and there are four teams in our conference that are ahead of us, uh, defensive scoring, ni 19 through, say, 26. Mm -hmm. um, and we're sitting around 60. So that's where our area of improvement needs sure. to come. Very good. Second half on the way, January 2nd at the Expo Center. You'll take on Bluefield State, then conference play uh, the next uh, week coming up. Uh, Coach, we want to wish you uh, great success in the second half. Congratulations. Welcome to Pikeville. Thank you very much. I'm, I really love being here. Coach Cliff Williams, head coach of the University of Pikeville women's basketball team, currently 24th in the country. You can check them out. Make plans January 2nd at the Expo Center and follow the U-Pike women. You'll enjoy the style of play. It's the Coach Kelly Well Show. We're live from Buffalo Wild Wings, and we'll return with the head coach of your U-Pike men's team. Coming up next, it's presented by Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back to Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. It's home of the Coach Kelly Well Show. Every Wednesday night, we're here at 630 talking U-Pike men's basketball with a complete recap of the week's action prior to and a preview of what's coming up. Next week, holiday week, the Bears will be in Florida enjoying the sunshine and uh, doing a little uh, pre-second uh, half work in Florida. Coach, not just basketball next week, but also use that as a bonding time for this team to come together, building chemistry. Talk about uh, the importance of that and the advantages of that trip. We've talked all the time that other than talent, your next most important thing is chemistry, and that's certainly something we continue to build. This group's got really good chemistry so far, and I just want to build on that. We're adding a player at the break, Clint right. Wasu, that we're very, very excited about. A great score from Idaho State. He's going to really fit in well. Uh, but we get that an opportunity now right after break. Everybody's made it through their finals. Everybody's free and clear and ready for second semester. So this really confirms this is going to be our finishing team. This is what we're going to be with. And to, to be able to travel with those guys, we're going to fly down. Uh, it's going to be busy in Miami. That's during bowl week. So there's yeah. going to be a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but our guys will be able to, to gel together. we got two good games down there against St. Mary's and Florida National. Both of those teams are very good teams. So we'll have to play well while we're there. Sure. I'm really looking forward uh, to every piece of the trip, you know, just from getting the guys back on campus to start practicing again. Uh, I'm probably way more excited about that than they are, but certainly they're excited about the travel time. Right. Uh, getting to go to Miami, we're going to surprise them, and I don't know if any of them are watching or not, but we'll be going to the Miami Heat game while we're down there. Nice. So a lot of neat stuff for them uh, to kind of show our appreciation to them as well because they give a lot for our university and sure. give a lot to our school. So we're thankful for them, and we want to show them uh, how much we love them. For those that are tuned in that would never get an opportunity to be on the bus, on the plane with a college basketball team making a, a trip to Florida and that case it's not just on the court but you talk about being able to catch an NBA game what are some other off the court plans for the team well obviously you know the whole travel process we have a lot of characters on our team so the whole time is a, a learning experience so to speak for yeah. all of us in regards to that but we, we do a lot of sightseeing while we're there yeah. uh, we couldn't get down we used, we wanted to stay at the Shula Hotel and it was booked because of all the bowl games and all the things going on yeah. so we're going to stay on the airport side so we'll do a lot of traveling and sightseeing while we're in Miami we'll take them all downtown and show them downtown Miami uh, and, and getting all of it it's the first time for me to ever be there as well so we're sure. kind of doing our research on where to go and what to do uh, but we're going to go to a town called Hialeah and that's where we'll play Florida National and we'll visit there they've got a couple sightseeing places too so 
Uh, it, it's just a overall neat experience for us. We get to go out to dinner at some different places and try to bond in that regard. Obviously, the scouting part of those trips is still going to be a business trip down there for sure. us when we go. Uh, we'll try to practice while we're down there. Normally, uh, we practice in Orlando where Donnie Jones was, and he's no longer there. So we went down further south, and right. we'll practice at the Heat Arena and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's going to be a great trip for them, uh, and that's a good chance to get to know them even better. Sure. Uh, your team, with a newcomer coming for the second half, uh, concerns about uh, a change in the locker room, a change in minutes for guys who have been playing. Maybe they lose some minutes. How tough is that to integrate a new player? Well, the good part of that is he's been with us all year. So he's been here practicing. He's been every single day. We've he's he's whipped us several days in practice, and sure. we've had to and we know how good he can be for us. And I think our guys realize that. So that's a great part of that. Now the fact that somebody's going to lose some playing time that's an issue and that's hard to get through but again i you know i've heard this said on tv this whole week by a lot of people you know this this is an equal opportunity you know right. this isn't middle school basketball you earn what you get and those guys that are going to earn it are going to get out there and and it's about our team even Duke coach k was talking the other night it's not about us trying to fit into them they're they're fitting into our team and yeah. the most important thing is our team and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think Clint's got a great personality. The guys all love him and care about him. Sure. Uh, he's been with us from day one. He's been part of our team. So it's not really going to be a big drastic deal in that regard. It's just on game day where some minutes are going to have to be shifted will be the hard part. Of course, a couple of games in Florida, uh, and then you come back and you'll be at home uh, for a couple of games the first week of January, including opening the second half of the Mid-South uh, season. If you had to name favorites to win the Mid-South besides you, Pike, this year, who would the favorites be at this point? Well, it, there's a lot of new going on. I mean, we were, we were completely new. I think Campbellsville was completely new. Uh, life was completely new. Like, life's 4-0 in the league, yeah. and then they, they're 7-6 and six overall. So they've struggled in that regard. So they've won the most important games. And, uh, you know, I think Cumberland's a very strong team. I think they're Cumberland's Kentucky and Cumberland's Tennessee. Both of those are very, very strong. And, uh, you know, it's kind of going to see how it all plays out. You know, Cumberland, Tennessee's, I think, 7-6 and six overall right now. Cumberland's Kentucky is the exact record of we are 12 and three. Right. Georgetown right now is a premier team as far as the record goes. Sure. Or, you know they added a couple guys at the break as well. Lindsey Wilson is a team that's really been up and down. Yep. Uh, that everybody projected at the beginning of the season would be one of the top tier teams, and they'll they'll get it figured out as well. And we saw how good Shawnee State was. So right. you know for me to go out on a limb, I'm gonna say University of Pikeville is the team to beat. Yeah. Uh, but certainly there's a lot of competition there. It sounds like it's gonna it's gonna be one of those seasons. You better show up every time out. Yeah. There's no question. That's what makes our league great that's why we can't get new members to it because every single team is very very good sure. uh, very very competitive and i go back to this all the time that i believe if you can win the mid-south conference you have an opportunity to win a national championship and that's something we want to try to do again uh, and we've got to win our conference to get to that level no doubt about it coach kelly wells and know you've got a christmas wish for the bears fans that are tuned in yeah absolutely you know what a holiday season this can be for all of us and let's enjoy this in the right kind of way and let's you know make sure that we're paying tribute to the right people and uh, that's certainly important. And, you know, happy happy holidays to my family that's watching. My mom yes. and dad actually tune in. And uh, to be able to spend some time with my family is great. But happy holidays to you and your crew and, and certainly all our fans. We need you back out. Yes. Second semester is, is very important. That's where all the critical games come into play. So we need everybody to come out. But enjoy your holiday season as well. Merry Christmas to you and the Bear family. Absolutely. Coach Kelly Wells, you've been tuned to the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. Live from Buffalo Wild Wings. Merry Christmas, everyone.